Welcome, Halloween fans. Thought I'd do something a little different. Um, as you recognize this from other people's videos, it's a uh, tier list. I thought, you know, well, hey, why not do Halloween? Because to me, the Halloween series was the one that really started to me off on watching the slasher movies like Friday 13th, the Nightmare on Elm Street, and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> um, so I figured I'd start with this one and see how many views I get and uh, probably do like other other um, franchises, as it were. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is um, start in order. <laughs> with uh, the original 1978 Halloween. Uh, so in case these categories fool you, it, they're basically going from best to worst. So I'm putting that in the... It was The Boogeyman uh, because it is a classic film. Despite its somewhat age, it still holds up. It's a simplistic premise of a killer that escapes from a mental institution and the doctor is trying to get him and hunt him down. And he is going, uh, the killer is going after these teenagers um, as the main character uh, is babysitting. And it still has some of the Best shots from all the films. Just the way that John Carpenter does his thing. Um, right down to the creepy mask. The iconic mask that has not been replicated uh, in any of these sequels uh, properly. Except for one uh, that I personally liked. I know a lot of people didn't like. Uh, and I'll get to that when we get there. But... Um, Halloween, uh, you know, I, I, the, the characters, I mean, some of the acting obviously is dated, uh, but I look at it as like for the time and they, the, the, um, characters come off as like, you know, teenagers as they're supposed to, and you kind of get the interest in all of them, right? And, um, uh, the setup. You know, with especially in the beginning with, with the escape of Michael Myers. And you kind of, you really don't know a lot about this Michael Myers character other than the very beginning and the whole sequence of him taking out his sister and all that stuff. And I love that scene where, like, he does the deed and he comes down the stairs and then goes out and the parents arrive and they take the the clown mask off and he's standing there not talking and with the knife in his hand like you know and it just sets the movie and um it's too bad that the television version you know the the scenes in there weren't left in the original cut because i think they add to the overall film itself so yeah uh the first halloween is definitely going in the, the number one spot. Halloween 2, for me, was the Boogeyman. Now, while the mask is not perfect, um, and you see more of his eyes, I think that it is a very excellent sequel to the original film. Well, obviously, it's not going to top the original film. Obviously, they had to put more gore in there because of the, the company. I remember, uh, yeah, in the documentary, they were talking about how they had the film shot, and then they, they wanted John Carpenter to put more gore in there and, and all that, you know, and he was really not wanting to do that because he wanted to make it like the first one where it's not about the gore, it's about the scare, it's about the one good scare, as it were. And um, while Halloween 2 is more 
going into the slasher take out everyone sort of uh, pendulum, um, it still retains the creepiness of the shape and the Michael, the Michael Myers character and how he follows uh, the main character from the first film uh, into the hospital and kind of like all that kind of stuff. And um, I the stunt uh, person that did the Michael Myers uh, in this one, uh, I believe George P. Wilver, which was his first time doing it, excellent. He does the movements and stuff. Well, not as um, close to the Nick Castle stunt guy in the first movie. Um, he still brings that imposing persona, the movement, the and all that kind of stuff. In fact, he kind of brings his own take, I guess, on the Michael Myers walk and everything, which is fine. And I was pretty cool with it. So um, the characters themselves, other than the Laurie Strode character in the second one, are not as good or built up as the first film. So you really honestly don't care uh, about them other than the doctor himself and they and so there's that uh, but still a fun time and a very true sequel to the original 1978 film Halloween 3 I'm going to put that in he's going to get you it's the middle of the pack while it's not first or second place I do feel that Halloween 3 is its own movie. Um, it has interesting ideas, and I know kind of where they were trying to go with the series and taking it into an anthology sort of deal, and that would have been cool. But, of course, the, the first two films in the Michael Myers introduction, people want that. Like, they, they were clamoring for that, and, of course, it led to the rest of the films in the series having that title character within it. But I have to say that Halloween 3 has moments. Watching it now is very cheesy, I will say. Uh, but there is one scene in this, uh, the third film, that grosses me out beyond all the other Halloween films. And it is the um, pumpkin head crush scene with the parents in the room. That sequence, I no matter how many times I see it, it was so well done with practical effects, but it's so gross and so effective. Um, the best, like, effect in the entire film. Uh, and there are some other effects as well that are decent and practical enough that work. But overall, like, the concept of the idea of a uh, special company and the masks and all that kind of stuff, I have to get credit because it was its own thing. Um, I mean, I could watch it again. Like, uh, yeah, as cheesy as it is, in a lot of the parts, I could honestly watch it. I, when I was young, I didn't care for it because obviously it was clamoring for old Michael Myers. But uh, you know, of course, I'm young and don't didn't really know how to critique myself with watching films. But over the years, I've grown more and more appealing to Halloween Three. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's not the worst one. Um, and I, I like that it's its own film in this whole entire franchise. So there's that one. Okay. Halloween 4 is going into It Was the Boogeyman. I love this film. I love 1, 2, and 4 because they all feel to me like the, the sequels after feel like they are sequels to the first film. And Halloween 4 has one of my favorite Michael Myers other than, than the original uh, in this whole franchise. And George P. Wilbur, I, once again, I believe, does Michael here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he is, like, I love the mask in this one, and this is what I was going for. And most people don't like the mask in Halloween 4, but I do, because it looks like death. It, I love how they they blacken the eyes out and they make Michael imposing and how he um, thinks 
where he takes up the belief force and the, takes up the power and kind of was leaning towards his ultimate showdown, trying to get at his niece, you know, and that whole thing. Um, the doctor coming back from the events at the end of Halloween 2 and how they do the makeup there of him all burnt and everything. A fantastic job. And the main characters are really good. Um, and I, I think, you know, even some side characters, like they're not the greatest, but they too work for what they are. And um, the 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 gore kills are some of the best in the franchise there. Um, there in Halloween 2, there were a few. Uh, but, like, um, obviously they're going from, you know, the just... Uh, the original concept of just like the scares and everything to now going into the you know Michael kills whoever he sees type of deal but in Halloween 4 I did like how he's restrained himself a little bit so for instance there's a scene when like the character Brody is on the landing of the stairs and and he's he's trying to protect uh you know Michael from going up the stairs further to get to the niece and Michael's just standing there while the Brody's doing whatever he can to, you know, quote unquote, beat Michael up, but he's really not doing anything. And Michael gives him time to, you know, run or whatever, but eventually that doesn't work out. And and I like that. I like because that this shows that like Michael's not interested in this person. Uh, he's more focused on getting to his target. Like the, it shows like he thinks and everything, right? And that's what Michael Myers, I think, sets himself from the other killer guys, is the thought process that he has a mind and kind of doing everything. And Halloween 2, um, while I love it, doesn't have that as much. If Halloween 2, in fact, feels more like a slasher than um, 1 and 4 if that makes sense. And I love the ending of Halloween 4, and unfortunately they didn't go kind of carry that forward in the franchise, but the ending is fantastic, and it makes sense, you know, because we've had three films with Michael, right? So it's kind of like at that point where it's sort of passing the baton, and, and they could have gone so much, they could have done so much with that, Unfortunately, they didn't. And uh, that brings me to Halloween 5. It is trash. Uh, I put it in the no for good reason because it is an awful film. Um, I hate the mask in it. It's like one of the worst masks in all the franchise. It doesn't even fit the stuntman properly. Um... The characters in it are just ridiculous and kind of remind me a lot of the, the sort of um, pointless cannon fodder that we get in these slasher movies, you know. And this even goes back to, like, the 80s and stuff where there were a lot of them that sucked because, like, the characters are just laughable cannon fodder. That's all they were. Like, at least, like, you know, with Friday 13th, the first one and maybe the second one and part of the third one, like at least they had these character types, but they were interesting in their own way. And then through the rest of the series, they were kind of like, ah, let's just throw some actors in there and that's it. Right. It's kind of like in Halloween one. That's what made it so classic and original is because of the characters themselves, not just the main character, but like the side characters, they all kind of had interesting points, even Sheriff Brackett. Um, you go to Halloween 4, it was uh, just as strong as the first one, where it was building the characters and everything, right? Halloween 2, again, missed that mark, but I still have it as on the top there because I still love the theme and the concept and the, and just the way they shot things and everything and that. So, But Halloween 5 just it felt cheap, felt ripped off, especially after the ending of Halloween 4, and they direction that they go with it I thought was ridiculous um, this is where they introduced the whole stupid thorn thing um, and I I don't like it I 
I don't like that fact that like he was marked and that's why he does things. I never liked that concept at all. So that brings us to Halloween 6. I'm going to put it in the blank pale emotionless. It's not worse than a 5. But it is a film that like if I had a choice, I wouldn't really watch it. Um, if that makes sense. Like, uh, um, the, I can't recall if, uh, who the stuntman in six was, but, um, they did a good job of Michael himself and just the way he walked and everything. I thought the Michael portrayal was fine, but the rest of the, the, of part six was ridiculous. Like they basically like did away with what they set up in four officially in part six with one of the characters. Um, and they carry it on in a silly manner. Uh, Paul Rudd is in this film of Ant Man fame, and his character is even like, uh, I don't know, we just don't care about him. Like, he's 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 a exploration character like he's telling characters about this that and the other and and then uh of course there it leads up to the whole ending and everything and then if the if you've watched the sort of director's cut of part six it still doesn't help its case um and the only reason that it's in second place and not last place on this list is because of the betrayal of michael myers and you're just kind of watching what he's doing and all that kind of stuff but beyond that it's a skip for sure. So, um, here we go. Here we go. Sorry, I have to scroll down a little bit because my screen keeps moving. So, H2O. Um, H2O. I'll put there. Um, I thought it was fine. I thought they they uh, kind of like wiped the slate clean if you're going to do that, and it supposedly takes place after the original first two films, um, where Laurie Strode is now on her own and all this kind of stuff, and she's working at this place, and um, like I, I liked it, and I liked uh, the the sort of the characters in there. Not every single one. Um, the stunt guy that was playing Michael in this, I thought the he did fine, but I did not like the mask. And again, I didn't like the fact that they show his eyes, um, because that just like it could be just anybody in in the mask. Uh, Whereas, like, Halloween 4, I love the fact they black out the eyes and they make him, like, imposing and again. Whereas this one, the mask just seemed, like, really artificial. Um, and so, uh, other than that, I, I like the ending confrontation with Michael and, and Lori. I thought it was really cool. They set that up really well. And and this honestly should have been the end of the entire franchise, but obviously that didn't happen. So uh, I put it in the second spot. I I watch it again. Um, it, it holds up. Um, it isn't perfect, but it it's it works in the Michael Myers spectrum of this franchise. Uh, so that's where I'm going to put that one. So, uh, next we got Halloween Resurrection, and you know where that's going. Um, Halloween Resurrection, just when I remember when I went to see it in the theater, I thought it was going to be a somewhat entertaining, and it really wasn't. And, I, you know, it's not, I mean, when you see Busta Rhymes in it, it's like, one of the main actors in it, right? 
that didn't turn me off, honestly. Like, okay, what rapper hasn't gone to a movie, right, at the time, right? Uh, so I wasn't put off by that. And I thought the concept of these people going into Michael Myers' house with these cameras and kind of like uh, uh, found footage style was an interesting concept, right? And then Michael's in there, shows up, and does his thing. Problem is, the execution was terrible, and the characters were just bad. Uh, not even, like, fun bad. Um, the mask was okay. Uh, the stunt guy, I could be wrong, but it could have been George P. Wilbur doing Michael again, but even if it was, I thought the Michael portrayal was okay. But not enough to save the film. Like, um, it just wasn't. Uh, the movie was basically too cheesy to really get into, and it's definitely one that I would not watch again just for that fact. And what really drags this movie down is how they handle the Laurie Strode thing from H2O. I thought it was such a stupid cop-out. Uh, I hated it. And it really dragged the film down for me. Um, and all it was was just destroying a setup from Halloween 1 and 2 and then H2O. That's why I like H2O. That's why it's second place because it, it makes sense for me. Um how that works in the sort of timeline, if you call it that. Made sure they could ignore part four with the niece and all. But if you watch uh, the original Halloween, Halloween 2 and H2O, perfect. You know, you don't really need to watch anymore because the way H2O ended. But here, where they reveal, they just erase everything that was done at the ending of H2O, basically. Just to have a throwaway plot where Michael can just smoke kids or teenagers or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, and the only thing that I could say that Resurrection has is the found footage style and seeing Michael walk every now and then. Um, so the, there's only one gore kill in it that I thought was interesting. Uh, where the one guy's like fighting with knives and stuff and all that. Um, I thought that was like an interesting one, but not a movie I would put on again. I would even watch part six over that. So that's where I stand on that one. All right. So we're going to go with Rob Zombie's Halloween. I gotta put that here. Blank, pale, and emotionless. And the reason I put it there and not last is because I did like parts of the beginning where young Michael is metamorphosizing into the silent killer he will become. And all that ridiculous swearing aside and the whole plot about he's in a broken home. Like, I don't really care about that, but I, I liked the actor that played the young Michael and how he flips and you see kind of like um, where he takes down that one kid and, and you see little excerpts and then how he, he kind of, you know, uh, eventually the mother sees him snap you know, and all that stuff. Like, that whole part was the best part of the movie. I didn't like the doctor. The actor's fine, but I didn't like his portrayal as Loomis. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought the Laurie Strode, like, the overacting is what killed this movie. Like, the overacting. Like, you have 1978 Halloween, which had a bit of that. But a 
was more believable than this Rob Zombie remake where it was just horribly overacted. Like, I could not get by that stuff. Um, and it's also a shame that they had the actress from Halloween 4 who played uh, Jamie Lloyd, the niece, in these Rob Zombie films, from what I recall. And it was such a waste. I get it, they're trying to be nostalgic and all that, but no, no. Now, all that said, I thought the mask looked creepy. The way they did the mask, like all kind of um, decrepit because it's been sitting a while. I thought the mask worked. I really thought it. Taylor Bain as Michael Myers, I thought it was too bulky, too big. His betrayal just didn't come off as not not imposing, but it just didn't have that Michael Myers feel. It felt like it was someone else wearing the Michael Myers mask, if that makes sense. I like the mask. I, I thought the mask was done really well. So that's where I'm going to leave that one there. Halloween 2, I'm going to put directly in no. While it was weird, which, you know, they tried to go a different direction with it, um, I hated this film. Um, I thought that it just, like, watching it, I had to, like, pause it a few times as to, like, what the hell's going on, like, you know, where are they going with this? And they really didn't go anywhere with it. And and they, and they destroyed the Lubis character even further, I thought. And, like, uh, it just didn't work for me. It was too weird. And I get people like weird, and that's fine if you love it. But I didn't. Uh, uh, like, this film could have been named something else. Uh, you know... Because it was for a uh, uh, Michael Myers Halloween film, it did not feel like one. It didn't even feel like a, a weird anthology film. It just didn't know where it wanted to go. Um, so I, I watched it like once, and that was enough for me. So uh, I remember being so off uh and again the overacting uh killed a lot uh of the film and uh i i do not like the way they made laurie strode's character in rob zombie's halloween films i thought they were just trash but that's me um it, it's i can't say if it's like the actors doing the roles. Uh, but I just felt like it was just, it, it was like Devil's Rejects. Well, even, even House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, like, those villains were villains. And I have to say, like, they're not my, my type of film, but I have to say, the, the what's his name, the, the clown character, I can't remember his name, but, Obviously, everyone else does, but like he was the best. Like those villains, they portrayed the actors portrayed them well. I have to give him credit for that for those films. Uh, but Halloween two, it just no, it, it it really didn't work. But anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, Halloween, uh, the sort of rebirth um, I'm going to put in He's Going to Get You. I I love how they got much of the actors back for this sort of new trilogy following the original 1978 because that's when it takes place. It takes place right after 1978 discounting every other film before it. Which is fine. Uh, the portrayal of Michael Myers was fine. Um, the mask wasn't bad. 
uh, it's just what I had an issue with is Michael just going that crap crazy. It felt like Halloween 2, where he just went and just went on the rampage and just whoever he come across, oh, I'm going to go after this person, I'm going to go after this person for no other reason than just have kill gore moments. Um, so, the portrayal of Michael Myers the best for me was 1 and 4 because of the sinister and methodical, I guess, way he was portrayed and the stalking and all that and all, all the other films really got away from it. Here, in the sort of rebranded Halloween series, the first one, the story just went kind of wonky for me, where you have the, the two characters that go and see Michael after X many years, and they bring the mask with them and all this stuff, and eventually Michael gets the mask back and goes to Hadfield and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the, it is cool that Jamie Lee Curtis came back to reprise her Laurie Strode role, and she's now waiting for Michael and the whole showdown, um, which is fine. Uh, you know, the, what was it? 20-plus uh, years or whatever that this takes place after the original events of the original Halloween film. Um, fine. But all the other characters, other than Michael and Lori, were like just throwaway characters, I found. Uh, and I I don't blame the actors for that. I blame the writing in this case. Uh, it could have been a lot better. Uh, it, it just had too many plot holes uh, that just, for me, didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, the person portraying Michael, there were... Uh, Nick Castle, I think, did a few scenes, which is cool. Uh, but there was a new stunt guy that did um, most of the work, I believe, and he was fine. He, he walked and did all that stuff, and I thought that he was good. Uh, so it's a middle-of-the-pack movie for me. Uh, I could throw it on. I could watch it like Halloween 3. Uh, so it's, it's going to stick there. Halloween Kills gets killed. I hated this movie. Um, and the reason I hate it is because I mean, you they, they set up cool things with the, first, the one before it, the first film. Um, and you figure that Michael would get out of the situation because they did announce that uh, at the time they made it that it would be a trilogy if it was successful which it was, the first film. So um, what I really hated was the whole um, the, 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 the mob scene and uh, the fact there's like uh, what what bugged me about the first one and this one was like the maskless scenes. I absolutely hated it. Where it shows him in full thug mode without his mask and he just looks like some guy that's beating people up or doing whatever. And they did, get, I appreciate, they did get the original Tony Brent, uh, who was the actor or stunt guy that played the maskless face uh, in the original 1978, and he was only used for that one shot. So they brought him back to portray the maskless Michael, and that, that's cool. But I like it. Um, but I didn't like that like he was out of the mask for a lot of the, the first film in this uh, newer trilogy. And they, they do that here, too, in Halloween Kills, where there's a sequence there where his mask is off and all that, and it just felt 
rushed and the characters and again they're trying to build up the final confrontation with Michael and and uh Laurie Strode um and I didn't like the ending um they honestly could have done one movie following the original 1978 and be done because with Halloween kills and Halloween ends, which I'll get to in a second, felt like it was just too prolonged. It just, it could have been one movie and wrap it all up and be done. And speaking of Halloween ends, I put it there and no. The the final confrontation with uh, Michael and, and Lori was really just not epic. It didn't feel epic enough. Um, what dragged us down to is the whole side character story of the... I don't even remember the character's name, but like he idolizes Michael and all this crap and um so that was kind of like uh what what's this doing in the film like it has no point to it like and they and they even the side characters throughout Halloween kills and Halloween ends they just felt like tacked on characters for no other reason than to show up like Anthony Michael Hall playing um uh, the the for the for the first film in nineteen seventy eight the one that baby uh Laurie's babysitting the uh, one kid like he he Anthony Michael's portraying him older obviously in Halloween Kills even there it's like that it, it's it felt too nostalgic like they were trying to add in all this nostalgic stuff but they lost track of like a cohesive writing story, a beginning, middle, and end, if you get my meaning. That's why Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends I hate, because it doesn't feel like the setup they have with the first film is there. Like, they left enough there to go with it. And Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends just didn't carry that execution where it could have been, right? I mean, they could have had, as an example, like Michael gets out of Lori's house when it, it burns down, and of course you could have him taking out those firemen like he did in the beginning of Halloween Kills. Fine. I, I get that. Uh, but like, he should have laid low and Maybe, you know, I go back to what I'm saying about how in one and four of the best portrayal of Michael Myers where, like, he has a mind and he focuses and he stalks and figures things out. You know what I mean? It didn't feel like that. These last two films didn't feel like they were earned. They just felt like schlock, just rushed mess. And, and especially in Halloween ends with that added character that had no point to him other than wasting film, honestly. So that's what I think of the newest trilogy. The first one is the best, I guess, from those three. But if I honestly had to choose between Halloween 3 and the Halloween rebooted series, I would watch Halloween 3. So, yeah, uh, a lot of these films uh, I have put in no, um, but this is uh, where I stand with these films there. Um, I thought long and hard about the first Rob Zombie Halloween and putting it in no, but it has moments. Uh, it's had setup. Uh, problem with it is 
right when it goes into adult Michael Myers, he becomes the Jason Jason type and all that stuff. And despite the mask looking really good, I just fell from that point on. And the overacting just killed the film. Uh, when it could have could have it started off with some interesting points, like the young Michael and his metamorphosis into going into the silent killer that he is. Uh, so that is my uh, tier on all the Halloween film. Uh, I, you know, you know, might like one better than me, you know, but that's the way uh, these go. And um, I, uh, one YouTuber I, I watched there, um, Cody Leach, I, I think you pronounce it, um, he really likes Halloween too. Fair. You know, everybody has their own, own opinion and their favorite, right? Um, I think, um, again, Halloween 2, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, I think for me would have been better if they, like Halloween 2, continued the film in a direction and an ultimate ending, like the original Halloween 2 sequel ad with the doctor in the room with Michael and he has his eyes shot out and then the, they turn on the gas and then um, Loomis lights it up. You know, that was awesome. And it kind of set up Halloween 4, how it begins, where Michael's burned and Colmus toast for a while and then wakes up. So, you know, that's what, like, these Rob Zombie's films and the, the newest trilogy kind of missed the mark on that, where it felt like they were just, just all over the place and disjointed and didn't really feel like they had direction. So that's where I'll leave it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll do another one soon.